Hey guys, so it's the end of August right now, and we're about to enter into September. Hopefully September will have some interesting first party Nintendo news for us. And before I get into all that stuff, I want to make a correction about something I said in my last video. I was talking about how the Partner Showcase had Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 in it, and some people had noticed what looked like possibly Erdrick from Dragon Quest might be included in that game. I had seen multiple people mention this, with no indication that they were joking or anything like that, though they may have been, and possibly I just didn't get the joke. As it turns out, this character is not Erdrick. It sure looks like Erdrick to me, but no, it's an original Puyo Puyo character called Lagnus the Brave, or Ragnus the Brave sometimes. But yeah, the Brave. Yusha. Remember that from speculating Erdrick? I do. He's even got that same Tierra headband thingy Erdrick does. Erdrick has tons of different designs, so I really didn't question this, and I know Puyo Puyo often does crossovers, so I just assumed that was the case here, and people might have spotted Erdrick showing up in the next Puyo Puyo game, but it turns out that's wrong. So my bad, I guess I got trolled here, I'll take the loss. And when you make a mistake like this, there's really only one person you can blame. Sega of America. Yeah, that's right, I'm gonna blame Sega here. You wanna know why? Cause I wasn't allowed to learn the Puyo Puyo characters. My country wouldn't let us. You see, growing up in the 90s, playing actual Puyo Puyo in America was about as easy as trying to watch Winnie the Pooh in China. So learning about these Puyo Puyo characters was essentially banned. For some reason, these characters had to be censored with characters American audiences already knew about. So I had no chance to learn who this Lagnus guy was. Instead, I got to learn about Kirby, again. I already know the Kirby characters, but apparently it was important that I saw them again. And you might be thinking, aren't you blaming Sega? Why is Puyo Puyo on Nintendo? Why was it turned into Kirby? Well, the rights for Puyo Puyo are really strange. It has a really strange history. So I guess we can blame Banpresto too. But regardless, the point being, I wasn't allowed to see these characters. On Sega, I didn't get Puyo Puyo either. I got Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Yeah, no Puyo Puyo characters for me. And honestly, this is barely even Sonic characters either. This game was based on the Sonic cartoon show. And no, I'm not talking about the one with the Freedom Fighters, the characters fans actually like that show up in those Archie comics. Those characters almost never get acknowledged in an actual Sonic game either though, just a few small cameos in Sonic Spinball. But no, I'm talking the other Sonic cartoon. Yeah, we're full on chili dogs here. So once again, no Puyo Puyo characters for me. This is who I got to learn about. Scratch and Grounder. Remember them? I do, I'm not mistaking Scratch and Grounder for anyone else. Now Sonic has a large cast of characters these days, and so does Puyo Puyo, but you know what? Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine didn't familiarize me with any of them. See these guys? This is who I got to learn about. Show me Squeal? I ain't mistaken Squeal for Erdrick. I guess you could say at least this game has Dr. Robotnik in it, and you know what? Do you think that's him? Well, it's not. No one's fooling me with that one. That's Mama Robotnik. See, I can actually tell two characters that look similar apart, but apparently only when it's related to Mean Bean Machine, you know, a game I actually played, a game that drilled these characters into my head. And honestly, the game being called Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is an issue now too, since that isn't even what Sega wants me to call him anymore. No, now he's Eggman. Eggman. So even the title character of this game is outdated and irrelevant Sonic information. And yeah, I know, now Robotnik is considered like his last name and Eggman is like what he goes by. It's like a King Koopa and Bowser thing. But still, any of us growing up in America who enjoyed this puzzle game, these are the characters we learned about. Them. This guy. Not them. Them. This guy. Not him. This. This guy. At least we got that cool Sonic Mania boss out of this whole mess. I guess now is a good time to mention that Dr. Robotnik, and yeah, that's what I call him, I don't say Eggman, would make a great rep in Smash. He's honestly possibly the second most iconic gaming villain next to Bowser, and if we were to get a second Sonic rep, I would want it to be him if that was possible. And let's talk Puyo Puyo reps here too. Honestly, one of the big reasons to get Arl in Smash is to fix this whole mess, actually familiarize Western audiences with the Puyo Puyo characters. That's something we were never given the chance to do. Only recently have we been getting actual Puyo Puyo here. Smash has always been a great way to introduce Western audiences to new game series. For instance, getting Marth and Roy in Melee opened the door for Fire Emblem to finally get released in America. Maybe the lesson to learn from that is add more characters from Japan-only games to Smash so that their series become known here. Instead of just... 
Yeah. Anyway, Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 comes out December 8th, which is awfully close to Smash Ultimate's two-year anniversary. So potentially, if they do something for Smash's anniversary, possibly announcing Arl for Smash would be good timing. Speaking of anniversaries, I've said before that Little Mac is the only Smash character reveal that ever lined up with their anniversary, and that's true, but I should also mention that the release of Hero was really close to the anniversary of Dragon Quest XI. So sometimes anniversaries can be important for Smash characters. Alright, so we're ending August here, about to enter into September, and when could we get some first party Nintendo news, and possibly even our next Smash character revealed? One thing to check is Nintendo maintenance. These don't always point to things, but sometimes they do. There's actually three of them happening today, August 31st. The next time there's a scheduled maintenance is September 14th. September 13th is the 35th anniversary of the Super Mario Bros. series. We have all those rumors about a 3D Mario remastered collection or something coming to Switch, so it's possible something could actually get announced right on the 13th, right on Mario's 35th anniversary, and maybe that maintenance the next day is to update for that. We also have Nintendo holding a special briefing session on September 16th, so it does feel like something will probably get announced before the 16th if they have something to announce here in September. Also, Nintendo Dream Magazine said that they would have a Switch game to reveal everyone will enjoy in their September issue. So obviously that would mean some new Switch game getting announced. Nintendo Dream has never showcased a game first, so it makes sense that Nintendo will probably announce something and then that magazine will be covering that game. A game everyone will enjoy would honestly make sense for that 3D Mario collection. If those rumors are indeed true. Over on Twitter, at PushDustin wrote, When do you think Nintendo is going to update the Fighter Pass 2 ads? I haven't seen a version with just Min Min, so I keep thinking we are close to a reveal. What do you guys think? It seems the ads for Fighter Pass 2 in Japan don't even have Min Min on them yet, so potentially they're not updating them because the next fighter is so close, they might as well update them both at once. It's also possible this could point to potentially the original marketing here was to have Min Min and the next fighter announced at the same time, possibly at E3. That might have been the original schedule here. We have the next two Amiibos, Joker and Hero, coming out on September 25th in Japan and on October 2nd in America. Over on Twitter, APC Cypher did a really good write-up of Amiibo Theory. Amiibo Theory has been something to go off of for a long time. Basically, just when we get Amiibo releases, they tend to coincide somewhat with character releases and character reveals for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So these images are just a really nice compilation of that. We have the original launch of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate alongside the Inkling, Wolf, and Ridley Amiibos, and also this is when, of course, Joker was revealed. Piranha Plant came out on January 29th, and the second Amiibo Wave came out on February 15th, 2019. So there was 11 days after that DLC that those Amiibos happened. The Wave 3 Amiibos came out 5 days before Joker and version 3.0.0 released. The Wave 4 Amiibos came out 11 days before Heroes DLC dropped. Banjo came out nearly a year ago on September 4th, 2019, and 16 days later we got the next Wave of Amiibos. Terry got released on November 6th, and it's a little different here because the Amiibos actually dropped on different dates in Japan and North America and Europe, so a few days later though we did get those Amiibos. The most recent Super Smash Bros. Amiibo wave, the one with Richter and Dark Samus, came out 11 days before we got Byleth. Min Min starting off the second Fighter's Pass has been the exception to the rule. There were no Amiibos released alongside with her. Of course, with the pandemic and everything going on, it makes sense that productions are a little slow right now. So potentially Amiibos were going to release alongside Min Min, or possibly that was never something that was going to happen and we're simply in between passes and there were going to take some time before we get the next set of Amiibos. Regardless, she's the exception to the rule here. And of course, this next set of Amiibos, Joker and Hero, come out on September 25th or October 2nd in different parts of the world. So going by all those other character releases, the estimated time for the next character to be released would be between September 7th and October 12th. So between the rumors of a 3D Mario remastered collection or something, possibly coinciding with Mario's 35th anniversary, and these Amiibos being released towards the end of the month here, it does seem we will get some first party Nintendo news possibly very soon here. Last time I mentioned that Sakurai said some of the Spirit Board targets may change slightly in the future. And he specifically pointed out how the Cuphead Mii costume changes that spirit battle. Usually you fight Mega Man, but if you have the Cuphead Mii costume, you fight the Cuphead Mii instead. 
Well, I just wanted to point out there actually is one other spirit that has been updated. The Rio spirit battle usually is represented by Me Brawler. Before the 8.0.0 update, Rio was just Me Brawler with an Isaac wig. However, now after version 8.0.0, it's Me Brawler with the Rio DLC costume if you've downloaded it. So some of these spirit event battles have already started changing like Sakurai said they would. Recently, Nintendo Life reported a rumor of a new Monster Hunter coming to the Nintendo Switch and might be revealed soon. We got Rathalos as a assist trophy and a base game boss in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and possibly that's all the Monster Hunter content Smash Ultimate's going to have. But it's also totally possible that a Monster Hunter Hunter character could be DLC. Maybe that was something they were considering originally, but just went with the boss battle. But now that we have this further DLC, maybe that'll happen. Getting a new Monster Hunter game revealed on the Nintendo Switch, of course, would tie in really well if we got a Monster Hunter character revealed as DLC. Over on Twitter, at Storm Yora pointed out some tweets from Hideki Kamiya. One tweet saying Bayonetta 3, and the other saying Astral Chain 2. Kamiya does sometimes troll on his Twitter account, but it is pretty interesting he mentioned Astral Chain 2. Storm Yora said it wasn't downright confirmed, but they said they had a trilogy in mind, and they will continue the series if Astral Chain sells well. The game sold well above expectations, so that's why everyone is basically saying it's confirmed. And then linked an article saying Astral Chain could be the first of a trilogy, depending on its success. And it was pretty successful. While we have already gotten an Astral Chain Spirit event for Smash, and I do think that greatly lowers a character's chances of possibly being a DLC fighter, it is possible if Astral Chain 2 is in the works, maybe we could get a DLC character from Astral Chain. I'm not counting on it, but hey, it's possible. And then finally, some sad news for Mother fans, at Hobonichi Mother wrote, I really wanted to play Mother 2, everyone. Here's how to play Mother 2, and the series, which I summarized previously. It was made last year, but I think the current situation will not change. And then there's an image guide for how you can play Mother 2, and unfortunately it's just on the 3DS, the 2DS, and the Wii U. This was for people in Japan, so that's why the Super NES Classic isn't on there as an option. So this essentially implies that there's no plans to release Earthbound or Mother 2 on the Nintendo Switch Online anytime soon. I do still think Porky having a missing spirit in Smash, particularly because he's a former Smash boss and the only one who didn't get a spirit, is highly suspicious. If Porky's spirit does return to Smash in some way, it doesn't look like it's going to be to coincide with getting, like, Mother 2 Earthbound on the Nintendo Switch Online, however. Alright guys, well that's everything I want to talk about in this video. We are entering September here, so hopefully this month we'll finally have some first party Nintendo news for us. I know a lot of us are starving for information. If you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. So once again, thank you guys for all the subscribes, all the likes, uh, it really helps out the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, or like the video, or leave a comment, whatever you want. Uh, until next time, have a good one.